Ragnar 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 present you because you, you do so many different interesting things, so I'll try. Uh, Ragnar Kelgi Olofsson uh, is a poetry and prose writer, visual artist, musician, philosopher, editor, publisher. Uh, you, you are many more things, but my hands started tracking while I was writing it. So uh, could, you, could you sum up what, what is all that you do, if you can? Uh, well, uh, what I, I do I do all kinds of stuff, but uh, it, it, for me, it, it, I would say that even I started doing doing visual art, and I still do visual art. And for me, even my visual art, just like my 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 writing, and I would say music, also for me, always comes from some idea of poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, so. For me, the poetry is, is kind of the basis of it all. So even my prose writing, I, I, I almost think of it as I don't. I really th use maybe try to use the ideas of poetry or the techniques of poetry. I would say so. And for me, poetry usually has a, means that there is a sense of temporality almost or, or of, of transience almost. And maybe even, I think poetry, from, usually poems are about what is not in the poem, mm -hmm. you know. They are always about what is not there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me that is kind of what I think about when I say that I apply poetry to other fields, is always making space, uh, um, applying emptiness to to artworks to leave space also for because I don't write for a, for somebody mm -hmm. but I leave space for somebody well, you know so that would be the, how I would think about poetry. Thanks. We'll, we'll get back to that. Now, <laughs> okay. now we'll uh, leave space for for Elias. Uh, it is uh, from what I read in the anthology, you are uh, an acclaimed flamboyant poet performer uh, living under my bed. So I have to apologize because if I knew you were living there, I would clean it. Uh, more often. Oh, okay, don't <laughs> worry. I thrive in filth. Okay, great. Oh, then you'll, then Is you'll, this working? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you'll enjoy it. Uh, so for a beginning, how did you uh, get into poetry, start writing and reading? Uh, it, into poetry, mm -hmm. thanks to, oh God. Yeah. I mean, of course, when I was a child, I wrote stupid poems that the teachers wanted to <laughs> read, but they were very, very stupid and humiliating, like if you would present them. But I, I didn't get into poetry, like for real, till I really studied, oh my god, uh, by 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And then how did you proceed? I mean, you are you're now... Quite, quite good for it, I would say. Well, now at the present, I am brain damaged, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how good of a poet I am. I am doing visual poetry, mm -hmm. and uh, in the shower I do improv. Uh, but uh, um, let's see how my brain develops. Uh, but I mean, I have a good CV and an unpublished. <laughs> books in, in my drawer, at least three finished uh, poetry books, and, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them, uh, but uh, what was your question? <laughs> uh, why, do you, why do you write poetry? Why don't you, you know, go into accounting or something, something silly? Because, well, poetry, I don't know, I, I, I guess, um, I mean, I'm really good in presenting ideas, giving ideas, giving inspiration, that's also what I would like from others that they bring me inspiration that really, really, really surprise me, really do something with my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, uh, even though I do avant-garde, that can be sometimes sound a bit cuckoo. Uh, <laughs> I'm very political, uh -huh. so like very, sometimes unbearably political. So for me, uh, choosing to write in Icelandic, it's a political decision and choosing to write in Galician, it is a political decision and choosing not to write in Spanish 
even though right now I'm coming on uh, good terms with Spaniards, uh, <laughs> that's also a very big uh, political decision. Uh, well, since in Croatia we, we can't read neither Galician nor Icelandic, so can you explain us the, the political dimension of these decisions? Well, um, it would be too complex. I'm going to just center in, in, in one uh, moment of my life mm -hmm. that I was a, a headless teenager and by chance I got a, a prize, a small prize, but a very prestigious prize. And uh, there was a, a, a very prestigious writer there giving a speech and I don't know, I think some Buddha was shining through him and he really made a transmission to all of us and, 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 and was empowering us for making language, mm -hmm. for doing the language, for being active in preserving, enriching and uh, you know also like, like, like Sio was saying, like you know like the best uh, written art or also oral art comes like when you have your language but also you know how to drink and nourish from, from I don't know, like Hadklima uh, Pieterson from the Baroque abroad. Yeah, like, it's like, like uh, uh, the, I, I only know like the, the, the Passion Psalms of Hadklima Pieterson, but they are amazing. They don't feel Icelandic, <laughs> but they are amazing. It's one of my, my, my favorite uh, literature books like ever. Thank you. Now uh, thank you. Uh, back to the back to the poet and, uh, and many more things, uh, Ragnar. Uh, so you said about poetry, how you uh, how everything is poetry to you. But how do you uh, how do you go into different fields? You know, because you write prose and you make music and you make visual art. Yeah. Well, uh, it is also a question. I mean, there is one of the good things is that nobody is paying me really much money for any of this <laughs> so it means that I don't owe anybody anything you know so I can do what I want and uh, I've never really been into the idea of well maybe when I was um, uh, younger still but uh, uh, but I've never been into the idea of, of uh, that making art should be paid for you know I think uh, uh, it, it is not uh, something that interests me. So, so I prefer to move around these uh, fields freely as what I love, like to do, what makes me, what brings me kind of, mm, yeah, I just like doing it, you know, and sometimes I want to do this and sometimes I like to do that. Uh, you know, creating for me art is, is almost like a container for energy. Mm -hmm. If you think about it in that way, you know, so every artwork contains energy, and uh, and the art that I am drawn to is usually art that does not uh, smell of sweat, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't smell of the pain of it being made, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try, not always succeeding, but I try to make my art and my performances or my, I mean, even my publishing, I think of as a type of a performance artwork. Uh, try to make it in that way so it has energy that is not kind of um, heavy mm -hmm. even if it's dealing with uh, uh, serious stuff but uh, that, it, that, it, that it's light kind of and, uh, and not, 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 not smelling of, of, of sweat you know? even if sometimes it's difficult but still you know try I think it's the easiest way to make something not smell of sweat is not to sweat while you're doing it so, but uh, maybe there are other ways I haven't learned them yet. But that's so I move around and enjoy my enjoy my creativity in that sense. Yeah, it's interesting because the novel you wrote, which which is the the extracts are are yeah. translated the the library of the, the library of my father, I think it's called mm -hmm. in, in English. Uh, but uh, uh, it's it's a uh, it's, it's a novel, so it's it's like difficult as, as such. But also it's it's like a, it's about uh, grief and about. Uh, uh, your relation to, to books and your father, so it is like, uh, it, it's really a sweaty subject, just to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, um, but uh, I think, uh, well, once again, I mean, maybe that's also, I guess, what poetry uh, means for me, is uh, just, especially when you're dealing with topics like these, 
uh, it is this great, uh, one of the few tricks I've learned in, in, in making poetry, in making art actually, is always after you've written a poem, delete the last line. <laughs> yeah. Because it's always too much. It doesn't have to be there. And then, all of a sudden, it doesn't get weighed down like a butterfly hanging from a, from a rock, you know. And it, 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 it opens up and it makes space for somebody who's reading to come and, you know, as the Buddhists say, you know, I am because you are. And that becomes a, 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 a real dialogue for, for the reader. Even if maybe not, it's not necessarily. I and also because I am thereby also relinquishing control, which I is another thing that I am also very interested in, and I do in all my artworks, is trying not. I think I am a control freak in recovery. I think like like all all Western humans, you know, it's, we are control freaks. We are addicted to control, and and being an artist is challenging because in a way. It is so tempting to control the reader. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, in a way, to wake emotions in the reader or thoughts. And I, I find that kind of disconcerting. I find it kind of doesn't appeal to me. I find it, yeah, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I, so I try to make artworks, even making, not controlling the reading order of the poems in my books or. Or like in, in this book about my father's library, using fragments, using leaving lots of holes in the in the narrative. So, uh, yeah, uh, that that is at least one of the things I'm I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. relinquish control. Yeah, up to a point at least. Okay. Uh, that's what do, what do you think? Is, is your I mean, uh, I read your poetry in Irish, right? But uh, what do you think about it? I, I'm just processing everything that Ratna has been saying, and uh, I don't know, I think he's, I love his style because he's um, uh, saying some, he's just talking about this, but s some of his thoughts are very radical, and there are some advices that, I don't know, even this thing of time in poetry is sometimes very forgotten. And I don't know, you should maybe write a manifesto, <laughs> even though manifesto is always a bit. Maybe it doesn't have so much sweat, but it has some spit on it. Uh, but uh, it's still does. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, could you could you add up something to that manifesto? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm a creationist. Uh, mm -hmm. I do other things, but of course, uh, like uh, those ideas are good references. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you said that, that you write in Galician and you write in Icelandic, and you said that those were political decisions, but they're also um, not easy decisions to to go through. I mean, you, you have to uh, you have to be able you have to be very good with those languages, and you are very good with those languages. Uh, no, no. Uh, I've I've been always like. Uh, he speaks better Icelandic than I do. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Like uh, also, like even. Uh, like it has happened that you know I know that that uh, that uh, um, when uh, you know all of a sudden I now I feel like uh, uh, no because for example like uh, for example Galician is one of my mother tongues <coughs> but I speak a dialect and and after COVID and being actually legally trapped in Iceland for quite long it's a long story. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't speak Galician with anybody, so my, my uh, like I conjugate verbs like in standard. I cannot conjugate them any, anymore, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, but it's another thing. Like in that way, writing poetry and sorry because I'm going with my <laughs> complexes. Uh, I like writing poetry is very empowering in, in that way. But but yeah. You know, I'm, I'm used like even even when I was a child, and maybe that was one of the Asperger um, how do you call um, characteristics. Like people told to my mother, "Oh, where is that child from?" You know, when yeah. I was a, a child, I was like, "It's my son. It's from here." Because I apparently had a an accent. Oh yeah. Yeah.
Uh, but, uh, but you were 20 when you, when you came, if I'm right, uh, around 20 when you came from Galicia to Iceland, or? Uh, I'm really bad in math, uh -huh. but uh, probably like that, I couldn't, like the first time I couldn't even get into bars. So my drunken <laughs> friends would leave me in the street, <laughs> snowy. <laughs> Uh, but uh, how did you, you know, while you were learning Icelandic, and I can imagine it's a, it's a difficult process to, you know, to even come and order coffee, uh, how did you come from, from these beginnings to, to writing poetry? Oh, uh, the problem is not writing poetry. I mean, poetry, I mean, you know something of a language, uh, and, and you can do poetry. Children also do poetry. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's something very natural. Um, uh, I don't know. I just... My plan was living in Italy. In, in Italy I had an, now I know what it was, an autistic meltdown, mm -hmm. and I quit it with Italian, like totally. I took Italian out of my life, I'm sorry. Italian is a wonderful language, a wonderful culture, but I couldn't live in Italy. <laughs> is it better in Reykjavik? <laughs> uh, some Italians call, Iceland, La Sicilia, the north. <laughs> but I mean, it's very different. It's very different. Um, I don't know. In in Iceland, it's very easy to live in your bubble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There okay. are bubbles in Iceland. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, in biology, uh, you have this thing that uh, when you have some extreme environment, you you don't see much life. But actually, those are the most complex biosystems that you find on Earth. You find more, um, more uh, biodiversity in the tundra than in the Amazonas. Yeah. Uh, and that's Iceland. But also, nota bene, it, it means also that these systems are very, very fragile. Great. Uh uh, I mean, uh, well, you, you don't write in, in several languages, only in Icelandic, as far as I know. But uh, you, you use other media, you know, which are probably like, like other languages, you know. So how, do, do, do you find it like that, that you combine these things, or...? Yes, yeah, of course. I have never th thought about it as different languages as such, but I guess visual art, for example, or... Uh, is a type of a different language, I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, but I would not think about it as language because uh, uh, I think language is peculiar mm -hmm. uh, and dangerous uh, more than than uh, than uh, other forms. That's why police came, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, nobody gives a damn about visual art. Police don't bother showing up. Uh, no, but I think uh, it's. Uh, I mean, because both music and um, and what I like about music and visual art is that, in a way, uh, even if contemporary art is, of course, has a discourse around it, which is linguistic, uh, but still it is actually a bit uh, f apart from uh, language. Mm -hmm. uh, language is. Um, I, I think it's difficult to talk about thinking without language. Uh, and sometimes I think, uh, at least me personally, I, I, I need a break from thinking. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, language is, is both a wonderful tool, but also a trap. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, it is, uh, for me, I would almost think about it not as different languages, but as different ways of being. Uh, especially music, I think, which obviously everybody agrees is the highest form of art mm -hmm. and the highest form of being in the world. Uh, especially, just, uh, especially because it's not lang linguistic. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is beyond language in a way. Well, since you mentioned music, you, you told me in an email that I can ask you about the electric guitar. So <laughs> I'm curious what is that. <laughs> well, you, I was just saying because you were asking, is there anything we should not talk about? And I said, no, talk about anything, the electric guitar or whatever. <laughs> no, it's just an example of a weird thing to talk about. But yes, I, I, we could talk about electric guitars if you want to. Yeah, do you play, do you play guitar or other instruments or what? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 my guitar is my, my main instrument and, and the bass, but I, I play Fender Telecaster 1985, <laughs> rose, uh, rose wood neck and sunburst body. Yes. Impressive. Yes. <laughs> yes.
Uh, okay, Elvis, uh, you're also uh, you're also a performer. So, what what could you tell me about what kind of performances do you? Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I have alter egos, mm -hmm. and uh, also um, while the poetry brothel was existing in in, in Reykjavik. I, I was one of the members, and in the poetry brothel, I don't know if you know the phenomenon, um, you're just a whore selling poetry, you sell poetic services, and it's, uh, I don't know, like, like people got sometimes very aggressive with me when I was explaining this, I, I don't care, <coughs> uh, it, it's just, uh, we are all adults, and it's just a game, romanticized, and yeah, and I was Michael Drake, yeah, which is one of my characters, and he has had so much influence in me, and also like, um, uh, before I start um, a project, I usually get into a mood in kind of like a hum of, uh, of uh, a skin, like a new skin of uh, of a character, and uh, and I usually make either a song or a performance for it. Now I'm stuck in the blind vulva. Uh, series, the blind series. Ah, actually, it's interesting. Sorry, <laughs> blind series. Uh, yeah, um, that's yeah. Uh, well, uh... But I, I didn't like the, the, the te that text, for example. I didn't send it because it's very difficult to translate, and uh, we were kind of in a hurry with the text. So. Oh. Okay, but uh, can you 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 did prepare something to read for us, right? Uh. Yeah, uh, sh is the time for reading or... Yes! <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm stuck with this. Yeah. Oh, this is from from uh, uh, the last uh, thingy I published. It's called... Um, uh, Censorship number one, censorship number two, censorship number three, censorship number four, censorship number five, and this is censorship number six. Uh, do, do you know what the uh, poems are about? <laughs> censorship. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really funny, it's really funny because since I have this face, and usually I wear a mask because of that, like uh, the press in, in several places they wrote, Oh, he writes about, because I was playing fuck with the, yeah, I was fucking with language, and uh, it was very difficult to understand what, I, what I'm saying, or just creating gibberish, so people thought, oh, and Elias Knör uh, writes about how difficult it is to understand Icelandic, or something like the experience, which is really interesting, but I, I really like that interpretation, but then the, the political message of, of the poems is lost. So with the, the poems that I'm gonna kind of perform or whatever, there is no translation, so... <laughs> uh, okay. Like this. And this is an old poem, if I find it. Ah, uh, we have a column, I cannot see you, everybody. <laughs> Nay, fear you walk now. Moon ye eki ten trust. O verla, die me ker cluster Heimsus greit leaste lampi Nei, ég ætla að verða heim senda sjóari Og flakk um höfin og sjáfa tóftir Og rústir og salta leifa þanga til ég finn Now, 
normal poem as normal as it can be. <laughs> and I'm going to say something I've never said about this poem. And it's, I always think about Yonsei from Sigurros with this poem, because it has a melody, but only he can sing it, so I'm just going to read it. Tvær húsmæður dansa á snúr og elskast í loftvinnleikum. Önnur er silki fyrirði og hinn er bómullarblóm. Undir áhrifum hreingjörninga, ykkjaður ljóð og fátti. Ég bauð lífræðingnum í bakaðin minn. Hann dáðist að sérhverju ljósaberu þar og tók að dansa eins og gista fyrir því. Því er nættar. Ég sé hvernig leyndarmáli það ljóma eins og fullnægingar, sagði hann. Þeir eru fullir, sagði ég. Sætt ekki blindur, sagði hann. Barnir blómstra og ég breytist í vakna með sjóar að sár. Það vorar með stormblómum. I don't know if you know, like, when, when some children are so small, so small, so small, and they cry, like, and it's, it's terrible in a way, but you, you get so happy. I don't know, it's the only, you know, it's the only time when, when you see somebody crying and you are happy, I don't know. I don't know. When a child, I mean, when a child is born, you get so happy when you hear that, that crying. Okay. That's another kind of try, uh, crying with this boy. It's kind of, yeah. Snemma vakna blótrópar í speglinum. Ótal slösuð augu berast inn á heimili. Búm til blóm úr morgninu. Sannleikurinn er rópur í rými. Hann má skreita með frjósinni á stjörnum. Hann má lækna með glitrandi blómum. Undir morgun vakna stúlkan í völundar húsi og blæðir sér blinda. Hún á heima við spegilmyndu. En búum til blóðum um morgunina, klæðum bergmálið spennlegt. Tímana í loftinu og meðan vonlausur munkar sleikja svörtu mjólkina í handritunum. Bænir reyðja himinin og meðan hálsinn dregist hátt, 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 og verður klukkutur. Now some instructions for people who want to become a poet. You need to work with your horizon. Writing poetry, writing many verses, every verse is a horizon. Sjónarundin er snúra. Þar á skáldið að láta fóttin sinn þorna. Sjónarundin er fiskilína. Þar á skáldið að láta tungu sína hvíta og mig. Sjónarundin er snúra. Þar á skáldið að láta að nýfæri sinn reykjast, reykjast, reykjast að eigin. This is a poem dedicated to Fjöldbergur Bergson because he has a problem in one eye and he is becoming Óðin, the god. Það var heimsendir í nótt. Undir morgun vaknaði ég með rekafi í öðru auga. space for this. O 
odjevam kišu, kada se brod nasuče u mome krilu. Odjevam se i pjevam. Kaj je sve na repletem tjo? Zato šta sam mrtva. Kaj je sve na silki vjer? Zato što sam mrtva. En fyrir að höfn og haf mig, segir mér. Þyrir að ljóð í hjarta eðar, eigi gersema í munni eðar. Þyrir að höfn og haf mig. Ali, ég sá mörðva. Ég og djefam kýsu. Robinjaku ég bjefa. Ég sá mókra ljúbav. Ég sá morska bjena. Robinja, ko ja pleše, ja sam luka, ja sam sirena, ja sam mrtva. I nótt byrja hamskipti stjarnana. Glumur á lofti flækist í norðurljósu. Og ég vil húsvökum blasir við, skrúðganga, skæri líkama sem láta hengja hjarta sitt á ský. Ósnorta raddir klæðast ástriðu, allar stúlkur þrá taka þátt í nætur himlinu. Þegar ég dætti dúnalog, hitti ég bata að dögum. Hún var drottning með sjóra augu og drottningar þegar braga á skutli. Hún sá mig og hóf hvalveiðar í kveði mínu. Hún fróaði mér með illi. Ok, and now we finish. What do you want? Because it's too... Um, attitudes. Either, um, no, this is too long. Um, either some Icelandic that nobody understands because it's kind of like made with a medieval kind of uh, how do you call it? metaphors of medieval. Um, or <laughs> French, which is. <laughs> Which is uh, like the uh, the other character for for an unpublished book that I don't know. I mean, I have a contract to publish it, but I don't know if I'm going to publish it next year or not because I'm a weirdo. Uh, what do you prefer? French. 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 Okay. French. I've heard more French. Look, 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 look. Okay. I'm bad in French. I really need to learn French. Uh, this idea, as, as I'm saying, you know, like the idea of, of that brings this voice is that uh, I'm imagining the city as a cemetery. Why? Because um, there are people who can be alive and there are people, because of marginalizing, that need to stay in their graves and cannot live the life they long for. Until the day of the doomsday comes, the end of the world, like the um, sky opens like a blue vagina, and, and then the drummer comes, so I, I'm supposed to be the drummer, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> for being so uh, megalomaniac, and uh, I'm waking up those souls to live, uh, to live through poetry, at least. <coughs> so. That's the idea, if you don't know French, or my <laughs> pronunciation is too bad. Toutes les âmes se réveillent au son de mon tambour. Lève le bourgeonne vite à mon pas. Comme le printemps agitant ce cimetière, une tempête de couleur efface tout reste de rancune. Pam, 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 pam. 
monceau du ciel, tombe sur la terre, c'est la graine de la gloire que soulage ceux qui montent à das. 3, 2, 1, boum L'arc-en-ciel vibre, pousse de mon pou martial. On chasse ceux qui vivent, car c'est l'heure de ceux qui rêvent. On ménage pour le rythme, l'éclosion de l'avant-garde qui vient pour toi. Param, pam, pam, param, pam, pam, param, pam, 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 param, pam, 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 So I find it so funny to say Bala. I don't know about French, but you speak Croatian better than I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just uh, two short questions, then then we'll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I noticed that that you are very, you know, your your forms are are short and quick. And you are very precise in what you want, even you know when, when talking about slides you, you have a clear idea how it should be done. So how do you how do you work on that? Is it something that comes natural to you or this formal element? I don't know, every poem is a system and mm -hmm. it needs to be sufficient by itself and all elements uh, need to be there, so and technically, uh, because I mean in the in the interview I mentioned uh, Roman Jakobson. Um, one of one of one of the things uh, that uh, uh, defines the um, the how you call the poetic uh, function of, of language is that you have a message or, or also like uh, an, an artistical product, mm -hmm. and it means that all the combinations that, that you would have done are there for a reason for working for the final pro product. So maybe you shouldn't alter. Mm -hmm. So may maybe maybe I sound like that because of that, but of course. You can always reinterpret it and derivate things in other places or other directions. Okay, and then what kind of emotion, you know, because it, uh, it's, it's very systematic, but uh, what kind of emotion drives you to, to start working on this system? <laughs> I know, only difficult question. <laughs> this is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, thank you, Elena. You will, you will read, if I'm correct if I'm wrong, but you will read us an excerpt from your novel, right? Yes, well, it's not really a novel. I don't know what it is. It is not defined in any normal category. It is a, it is a es long essay or a poetry book or, a, mm -hmm. or an autobiography, maybe. Yeah. So it has a long, long, yeah, all kinds of everything. But it's also very exciting. It starts with an intimate story and then goes to the to the whole galaxy and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it goes all, a bit all over the place, yes. Yes, yeah, so, so take us all over the place. Please. Yes, okay. I was going to ask my, my friend Alstafane, who is luckily here. She has collaborated with me on many weird um, poetic nonsenses. So she is always, is always yes when I ask her to help me. And I would to ask her to read, uh, because this is a book about my, when I was trying to get rid of my father's library, when my mother was moving house and said, you have to get rid of the letters, all of these books because I can't take them with me now. My father has passed away. And uh, so I'm, I was going through the, these books, trying to get rid of them without much success because books have become worthless, with, even if they were very expensive when they were bought. And uh, so it's a book about how, how, how books have shifted from the center of our culture to the margin. Uh, uh, but it has uh, lots of quotations from woven into it from these books from my father's library, and uh, I wanted to ask Asta to read the quotations, and I will read the main texts. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can get uh, a microphone to her. Is it possible? Yes. Because I asked her if she'd read it, and I promised she would not have to go on stage. She could just sit in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, Asta starts. Saga þessi er sönn. Við vitum ekkert hvaða öfl er hér að verki, hvaða sjónar spili er sett hér á svið. Ef til vitli er hér um löngu liðin atburðar ræða, 
Bókasafn föður míns telur ríflega 4.000 bækur, það er gróflega og þó varlega áætlað. Ég sló tólutöluðar í morgun með því að telja hillunar og margfalda síðan með meðar fjölda bóka í hillu. Bækurnar í geimslunni skildi ég útundan og líka bókakassana í bílskurnum, já og reyndar líka fyndin og möppunar á ganginum. Ég sit í bókaherbyggi föður míns. Eftir tæpa tvo mánuði flytur mamma í nýja íbúð, hún getur ekki tekið með sér nema lítinn hluta af bókasafninu. Það er talað í sínu 27. mars 2016, það eru átta ár upp á dag, síðan pappi dó og nú býður mín og bróður míns það verk að koma 4.000 bókum hérðan út, koma þeim í verð á réttan stað eða rangan, allavega eitthvert annað. Þetta eru fjórir veggir, þar til bókum frá gólfu upp á lofti, ég hafði hættlað að afgræða þetta á einni langri helgi, en nú hallast ég að því að þau klöf hafi byrst á nokkru varmandi á umfangi þessa starfs. Í hvaða leið spyr faðir minn? Að leita að mér, svaraði drunmaðurinn. Hér í neðstu hillinu er alfræðisafn AB, átta bækur í stóru broti í lið með vindum sem eru prentaðar með svo grófu neti að það má telja að litta púttana eins og í málverk eftir Sora eða einhver pointtifistan frá nýtöndu öllinni. Litlu skýringamyndirnar eru ekki síður flottar, draumtátt, Freuds, myndgerði í stíl sjöunda áratörinu sem horta í búri í útskýri skilur fyrirbræð, orkar, mannsugurinn, skipin, hresti og sjúkdómar, hjólið og reikistjöldunar eru hér. En ég finn ekki bókina sem ég leita að sólu, var hún ekki líka í þessum flokki eftir að þegar hún týns. Líklega er það fyrir bestu að hún sé glötuð, því þetta er hættulu bók, bók á þeirri tegund sem ég veit núna að ekki að geymast í efstu hillum við hliðina og unna að sreyta hann aðeins nýn og hennar líkum geymist það sem börn á ekki til. Kirkjana á Núndi var lítil og langlaus, en 1881 fauk hún í ofveðri. Í sama veðri hvað hafa fókið kvartur á næsta bæ og þótti mér það merkilegra þótt skaðin var í minni. Þessi bók Sólin hafði djúp áhrif á límit í henni las í fyrst um kulnun sólarinnar. Um níu ára aldurinn sá ég ameriskan heimildafátt í sómarpinu um aðeinninn. Ég með myndina las ónefndur þýðat og þulur hann flutti textan áherslu lítið en af þungri alvöru við hrynjandi af þeirri tegund sem nú heyrist helst í dánarfregnum og jarðarflörum. Skrauður röttin myndist á eitthvað sem nefnt var kulnun sólar, þess myndist ég. Og eftir á að hyggja var tóttin í röttinni því líkast til hárréttur. Reykjavík, 29. júli 2006. Elsku unum mín, þegar þú fórst að tala, misti ég málið. Þetta var um vor, svo þegar ég kom heim úr skólanum daginn eftir settist ég í brúna leðusófan í stofunni og sem sólin hafði bakað frá hátegi í síðvetra ljósi þessari burtu sem gerir agnirnar í loftinu sínilegar. Þessar agnir sem eru alltaf í loftinu en börn sjá af einhver morsumann betur en aðrir. Sófinn var allavega, var þess vegna alltaf þægilega hlýr síðdegis eftir sólbökunina. Ég lá í sófanum og fletti upp í sólinni úr þjörfræði af bíð eða þjörfa og niðurstaða var eftirfarandi. Að endingum um sólin nýta upp allan vetnisforða sinn, það er ómyndlíjanlegt, hún verður sem sagt eldsneytis laus en áður en hún deyr út með hún þennjast út í vístis elds skýi og grilla allar reikistjörnunar sem næstarinnir eru. Þetta er ómyndlíjanlegt. Örlög jarðarinnar eru því að samaskapi ráðin jörðin líkur ævísinni sem sótsvört, kolbrunin, brunarúst, kaldur, kola, móli á þögulli einýðar, sportbrautum, ljóslausar leifar sólarinnar. Líka þetta er óumhlýjanlegt. Fjölfræði ABS setti þó örlítið fyrirvara við spána. En sutt var enn á hundu um þessi efni. En klikti síðan út með því að þó var í óumdeilt að dauða teir sólarinnar myndu eyða öllu lífi og satt að segja bara öllu og þar með tafið öllum bókusöfnum á jörðinni óumhlýjanlegt. Þá mælti bóknirinn. Hvað verður þá eftir er brendur er himinn og jörð og heimurinn allur og dauð góðin öll og allir einherjar og allt mannfólki? Ég man hvað mér svimaði, hvernig ég snögg reyttist, var þetta bara alkunna, var þetta á allra vindorið og hvers vegna þægði fólk um þetta og samt hefði bara allir áfram að baka brauð og bara í vinnuna að giftast og skrifa bækur og byggja hús og eitthvað spöld. Þetta blað byrjið þig að brenna. Svo eiflækist 
En mun man fá það sem ég hef beðið þig um ykkur? Hver er takni bylting? Getur hann sér nýja vitund? Ritlist, prettverk, dagblöð, útvarp, sjónvarp, netið, símar. Allt breytir þetta ekki bara heiminum, það er líka notendum sínum. Nýtt breytnin eigir ekki gömlu verkfælunum eða gömlu vitundinni sem hún ólaf sér. Við getum enn hlustað á útvarp, lesið dagblöð, frátt fyrir að vera með nettengda síma í vasanum, en hægt og rólega í sívaksandi þar reyðga þau samt þessi eldri miðlur á fórum. Reykfalla síðan í brúnum pappakössum, veru hátturinn og vitundar tegundin sem fylgir hættir að vera ráðandi og ríður inn í þokuna. Þannig endaði skemmti ferðin í vatnaskó. Vona ég að svo næsta sem ungmenna félagið fer verði ekki síðan. Vorið 1981, nokkrum dögum eftir ég uppvöldaði að dagar jarðarinnar væru taldir eftir lestu sólarinnar, vorum við pappið að keira eftir hverstarslegustu götu Reykjavíkur, Grensásvegjunum, Ég var eitthvað þögut og daugur í dalkins og pappi spyr mig hvað ég sé, hvað sé að. Viltu ekki segja mér frá því, hver veit nema að megi breyta eða vaga það sem er ákræði, kannski hjálpar það. Ég horfði út um gluggan og svaraði svipið að laus, það getur enginn hjálpa með þetta pappi, það sem ángra mig, því fær enginn breytt, það er óumflýjalegt, það hefur ekkert upp og sé að ræða þetta frekar. Ég hef verið eitt stikki frekar óþólandi bað. Við pappi hefðum kannski ekki verið nokkru bættari þótt við hefðum átt eitthvað spjallum óumflegalega að kulnum sólar þarna á grænsásveginum, líklega hefðu það litlu breytt, allavega engu um kulnum sólarinnar. Ég finn það þó skýtt núna þegar ég sé fram á að þurfa að eyða stórum hluta að bókastafs föðum míns og sólinni, líklega þar á meðan, að ég hef í rauninni aldrei fyrtilega sætt mig við þessa staðrinn. Ég var frekar þögull krakki sem síðan var það einhverjum ungingi og alvarlegum ungum manni. Einn daginn, áðeins að ég tæki sérstaklega eftir því, var ég hins vegar orðið nóg auðtekin við að byggja hús, giftast, skrifa bækur og eignast börn til að geta eitthvað mér nægjanlega aðstaðrindinni um óumflýjanleika kulnunar sólarinnar. Samt sem áður er ég í rauninni öðrum træði enn jafnhissa og rasandi yfir þessari staðrind yfir því að þetta sé ekki fyrsta frétt í öllum fréttatímum Fór kalda áfram að byggja hús, giftast, skrifa bækur og eignast börn eins og ekkert sér sjálfsvæðið að. Eftir á að hyggja vildi ég samt að ég hefði svarað pappa öðruvísi þennan dag þarna í brúna volvónum á grænsásveginum. Ég veit svo sem ekki hvað ég hefði átt, hann hefði átt að segja við mig. Ef ég hefði dekti yfir hann staðrindar rónsunni úr sólinni, líklega hefði hann svarað eins og ég myndi þurfa að gera að börnum mín bæri þetta upp fyrir mig. Er ekki rúmi fjórir milljarðar ára í þetta? Það er kannski ekki tímabært að hafa ágjörð að þessu alveg strax, elsku kallið minn, ef við ekki bara að spáði þetta morgun. Átta ára ég hefði þá líklega svarað að bræði tæpir pappi, það eru tæpir fyrir miljarðar ára. Þóttist margir heyra vein og grát þaðan með ótal rögtrýtingum. Síðan var gilið kallað treyangil. Á þessari lengstu allra endalausra ástýða Allt auða plássið sem við líkjum andvaka við að skapa það sem við eyðum rétt eins og það sem gengur okkur um greipum skilur eftir eyðu pláss í andartak. Uns hver kríki, hver tóm skúffa, hver opin lófi, allt er aftur jafnfullt af þessari fullurugu fjarveri. Þú komst ekki leitina eins og þú lófaðir. Faðir minn sagðist ekki hafa mátt fara. Þá sagði draumaðurinn í blíðari rómi, ég veit það, en þú finnum við samt og hvarf svo. Aldrei í mannkynsugunni hefur jafn mikið verið fært í letur í ímsa miðla og núum stundir. Á síðustu tuttu árum örglega meira en samanlaus öll árin sem liðið hafa frá upphafi ritlistarinnar þar á undan. Aldrei hafa verið gerður út fleiri titlar á Íslandi en í fyrra og aldrei í sögunni hafa Bækur verið svo byrlegar, það eru allra færi að eitna spók, barga bækur meira að segja á sama tíma fyrir meðal sala og hvern titil mikkandi bækur fylla kassa eftir kassa í smettfullum bílskurum um allar bæ og hillumetra eftir hillumetra í dánarbúum. Eftir því sem frambúðu veik sníkar eftirspurnina því er virðist í einhverju öfugu hlutfalli. En bókarinnar býður samt enginn aftökusveit, enginn hægfara glinska og fásinni, enginn kvellur mun kveða við. Andvarpið verður líkar að suði í ískáp, en skýrunni stöðum. Einungis vegna þess að meindin er opinber í grunni tilverunar, 
getur hinn fullkomni framandleiki þess sem er komið yfir okkur. Um það vittuðu marga bækur í bókasafnum föður míns að í heiminum er mikill missir. Þjóðlegi fróðleikurinn með öllum sínum tjónum, töpum, umhleypingum, slýsum, mannfelli, harmi, remmingum og almennlegu hverstarslegu lánleysi í sannars og ekki verður umbeist. Þessi missir er heldur ekki ný til komin. Það er skrítið og eiginlega óskilanlegt. Miðaði hvað manginni hefur hlotið mikla þjálfun í þessu í gegnum aldir og árð þúsundi þróunarsögunar hversu frámunalega slöpp við erum sem tegund í því að slöppa takinu af því sem hverfur okkur og glatast því hvers tími er liðið. Að móti kemur að mögulega er þetta svo að innmitt allt nákvæmlega svona samansett af náttúrunni til að minna okkur á að aðalstarf hvers manns og hverrar konu sé einmitt það sem segir í auðnulausis hljónguðinni að skynja dauðan í hlutunum og verða þannig að manni. Ef einhver sem les þetta skildi minnast þess að hafa tapað eppli haustið 1909 á leiðinni frá landbrotum og hafjarðar á, þá getur hann séð af þessari frásögg hverjir hundur það og hvar það lendi að lokum. It is an uh, exercise in grief, in a way, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I grew up in publishing. My father was a publisher, uh, so I grew up around books, so, you know, for, since forever. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like books, you know, I don't like having them around. I, I, I don't have bookshelves in my house, I don't, because I, they, they, I feel they weigh me down, you know. It's like a lot of stuff to haul around when you're moving house always, you know, endless book crates. So I have a I have a Freudian problem with books also obviously, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I love them and I love also. So in that sense, I mean, it has the book has a has a subtitle which is a requiem and it is a requiem for for some and you only do a requiem for something you love, you know. So it is a, a way for me to try to exercise grief in the way of letting go of something I love. And I, I mean, I thoroughly feel that uh, I am convinced that the book is disappearing, you know, mm -hmm. it is disappearing. And what's more, uh, the, a, a certain type of being in the world which the book makes possible uh, will fade. I mean, it will not disappear completely, like nothing disappears completely. There are still people who know how to use a scythe to, to mow grass, but 99.9% .9 of people use a lawnmower, you know. Mm. And there, there will be always people that know how to do this, will be able to read long books, but I think that capacity uh, will disappear because humanity, uh, easy, always wins out against heart. And um, just like our memory got degraded when writing was introduced, you know, mm -hmm. before writing, societies could you know, memorize endless long poem, the whole Homeric epics were just like recited from memory. You know, nobody today could do that. It's basically, this new technology changes us literally physically in the brain. Uh, so, so with the book, a certain type of being in the world will also disappear, I think. And uh, a certain sense of long immersion, uh, solitude, so, if it's good or bad, I don't know, you know. Maybe it's beyond good and bad. Or maybe everything is beyond good and bad. 
but uh, it is uh, at least something that I had to come to terms with, and uh, writing this book really helped me. It actually really helped me. And uh, what is really interesting is that I have got loads of uh, response from readers about this book, much more than from my other books. Mm -hmm. It's like just people writing from somewhere, and, you know, that I don't know that they're having the same problem going through their parents' library, you know, or, and getting to terms with this centrality of the book is has has is disappearing and it, it is um, uh, I think we should it needs to be treated kindly mm -hmm. you know because it's a it's a form of, of, of grief process yes it is great but also uh, I wanted to ask you it's really great because you take us to all different places and you insert quotes and you go from narration to philosophy but it never feels uh, pretentious or hard, it's really it's, you know, easy and it's like dancing, so how did you structure the book? Well, I mean, it, it's like, it's like I think more, many artists know that in a way, at least what I, when I really feel happy and, and, and enjoying the creative processes is when I have discovered a new type of artwork, mm -hmm. you know, so first, before you make the artwork, figure out a new way of new type of artwork. And for me, I mean, it doesn't have to be literally something completely different, but something that, that for you makes it interesting. And so I was, I, I, I thought, I, 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 by applying very rigidly the, these kind of poetic um, sensibilities to prose, uh, I felt I, I was kind of managing to do well, basically, this book wanted to be like this, and I just had to obey. And I was just like, ah, but this will really not be very easy to understand or access for people. And I thought it would be actually, it really surprised me how, um, let's say, normal readers had no problems with, with the format of this book. Mm -hmm. It makes me kind of hopeful for for a kind of experimental formats, because it's completely no problem for people to read it. Anybody, my, my you know, my mother read it, she has like, no problem. Yeah, but because you write good, so yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, I guess you write something down, do you want I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. yeah, 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 it's because when, I mean, uh, First idea, okay, I can keep it in my mind. Second idea, okay. Third idea, I really need to write it down. Sorry. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, you, you do what you do. But uh, I'm not going to keep you here for long, but I want to give the audience a chance to, to ask you something. So do you have any questions? Please do have them. What happened to the library? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the well? Uh, well, you could read the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, it, it, it was, uh, of course, it was, uh, I failed in every respect, as, as one does, you know. It's like in the beginning I had very, the yes, idea of finding clear lines and very, you know, black and white solutions and, and stuff like that. And in the end, you know, it's just a mess, you know. So some of the books I managed to, to get to the Antiquariat, to the used bookseller. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he was willing to buy like five books. <laughs> but the rest, he, he, I, 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 I convinced him to take uh, uh, 2,000 just as a gift, just so that I would not have to take it to the trash, trash heap, you know? And then luckily my brother, he, um, he has a big house, and likes bookshelves, so he took a lot. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, you know I was a nasty father, so I took took some books and put in a in a box for my children and <laughs> gave them to them without <laughs> asking them, you know. <laughs> and then some went to the to the trust bin, you know, which is a strange uh, fact. And then uh, I will admit that I took two two boxes, which. I don't have them in my shelf. I have them in in the in the in the in the basement. They're still in the box, but it, I, I took a few. So my idea of not taking any of them, another idea that I completely failed that. So no clear answers. No clear answers.
speculative zebras of Iceland and uh, I need to I need to go very very fast as fast as this stupid brain goes so uh, I'm in many concepts uh, I mean the main concepts are in Icelandic but for because it's uh, a very ambitious project in, in, in prose and, and every week we meet and I'm extremely slow I'm writing in a very weird Galician which is <laughs> mixture uh, it has English it has yeah and every page you find also like two or three things in Icelandic but unfortunately I, I don't I mean I write things I didn't bring anything in in artificial languages but I also do things in artificial languages okay, okay one more question don't be shy uh -huh. Uh, question for Elias. Do you record your uh, poetic performances because they sound sort of like music? I'm not sure if, if it's intended to sound like that. Do you uh, plan on making an album of it or something? Uh, I mean, <laughs> making an album. <laughs> um, I, I don't have friends in the music, uh, um, how do you call, uh, scene. <laughs> Look, um, I mean, of course, some of the things have a melody, and some some poems even have a melody that I've never performed uh, because I cannot, uh, France, uh, like I don't have the uh, vocal cords for it. Um, like uh, when I was like really, really in misery because of my brain concussion. And I was like working in a project, and, and it went like so slow, so slow, and I couldn't write because I was like like a, a, a child in my brain. I ended up like making a soundtrack for that novel, but I don't know. It's been it's been a soundtrack that uh, I've used to to make my friends happy during uh, curfew in in uh, in um, how to call COVID. I forget about this. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the the next book, I, I, I've signed a contract, but I don't want to publish it. <laughs> See. It has several poems that should be a choir work. How do you call it? Choir piece? I don't know, music. I would need, you know, like a... If, if, I don't know. If, if you have friends, <laughs> that, that are choir music composers, and I would uh, like to uh, collaborate with uh, Crazy Moi. Um, I'm open for many things, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have Instagram. I don't have uh, those things. So the only things that are um, recorded of my performances are because somebody in the public or the organization did it. I've never done it myself. I suppose we have some right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. We'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more question before the lock? Or... No? Okay, uh, so I want to thank uh, Elias and Ragnar. Uh, but we, we have only begun. We have two more days of exciting Icelandic literature here in Buxa. And we have a book that you can take and read so you can always still be friends with, with both of them. For the book. <laughs> and, and luckily, I, I hope that today we get translated to Croatian and many more languages that some of us speak. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you both of you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.